Hi, this is Matt from Unbearable73. Today we'll be talking about 1883 Season 2. I recently read an article on Looper, which I will post uh, on your screen for a mo in a moment, talking about uh, what, the, what, we can, what we can expect from 1883 Season 2 and then what I would expect or hope from 1883 Season 2. Uh, for reference, 1883 is a prequel series to Yellowstone. It takes place, obviously, in 1883. It is about the arrival of the Dutton family in Montana. Uh, the, uh, the Dutton family is the main family of Yellowstone, of which, of which Kevin Costner is the lead. He is the, the great-grandson of the Jack Dutton, who is one of the main characters of you know, 1883. So here's the article. The first thing to note uh, is that articles like this, they basically, as soon as, as, soon as like a, a TV show comes out with a season, they spam articles with this title to get you to, to, hit, for, to, hit, to get, generate hits. Everyone, everyone who watches a, se a show who likes it is going to want to see another season of it. So they're either on the web type, oh, what, what's going to happen in season two, or is it season two renewed, or whatever. So you'll see a lot of, a lot of articles like, uh, so-and-so season two, what do we know, or so-and-so season two, is it renewed, or so-and-so two, prospective renewal date. I start to use Google, or preferably use something other than Google, because every time you run Chrome and or Google search, it occupies additional CPU usage on your CPU, as well as allowing Google's invasiveness into your environment. I know it's tough to do it out. A lot of us have Gmail accounts. I may actually do some videos later on how to divorce yourself from Google and Microsoft because I'm in the process of doing that. Not that the products are bad, but I'm tired of the big tech uh, censorship causing, uh, you know, that is plaguing us. Not so much from the issue of the censorship because the technology is working around it, but from their, their use of that power to punish people. Anyway, let's forget the politics. We're talking about a show that we all love. So, 1883 Season 2. Like I said, this is a generic sort of article, and you'll note if you read through this, they repeat the same five things over and over again. Uh, so, they do say, they do, the new bit is this show has been renewed. That definite Paramount, which airs this show on Paramount Plus, I believe it's called, their streaming service. That's, uh, they ordered more episodes of this. I also mentioned the other prequel being Greenlit, which is 1932, which which it which will tra track a different generation of the Dutton family, uh, halfway between basically 1883 and 2022, presumably. Although there's enough gap in it, and maybe another show around 1980 or so, 1990, if they really wanted to. Uh, so now I will. I did a review of 1883. I will post a link to that below. And I, go, I give you my thoughts, and I recommend 1883, obviously. Now, there's going to be a mild bit of spoilers for 1883 Season 1 in this, because without you hearing that, you won't know where I think they should go to 1883 Season 2. So, let, a, let a, I will now take a brief pause. If anyone wants to uh, check out... N you know, not watch this through the spoilers. You can stop right here. Okay, you've had the opportunity to take a walk, to walk away uh, if you want to hear spoilers. So, loosely speaking, at the end of 1883, season one was very bittersweet. There were some deaths. I'm not going to say which ones. I don't want to ruin anything for completely for someone who's checking into this and hasn't watched it yet. But one of them was almost foreordained. The other one was kind of shocking in the sense I thought they would make this character go into the to the second season as maybe as a sort of mentor and you see him this character achieve a certain degree of happiness. It I, I get I mean I understand I think they went a little too dark if there's any mild flaw to be said about the season finale. But on the other hand I get, I, I get why they did it. The, 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 the whole theme of the first season was a bittersweet triumph. They, they can get what they want, but at a cost. You know, that was one of the themes anyway. So, where, where do they go from the end? There was already a time skip in the episode. That should be, that's, I have to spoil that to understand. So the question is, are they going to just follow right after that time skip? 
Or are we going to see a f more of a time skip? So I'll go two paths with this. If they just do the one-year time skip at the end and show them settling and establish themselves, honestly, I, I, I don't think it would work as well as Season 1 because the first... The theme of season one was a bittersweet triumph over tragedy. One of them, as I said. If you go right into season two with them having sailed for a year, and if they survive for a year through a whole cycle of seasons, that means they've gotten crops to start to grow. They've built homes of some sort. They've established some sort of resources in a small community, which means that they've begun to survive. So if you if you're going to go immediately into them, their survival being threatened, because that's the theme. They're pioneers. There has to be a threat to them that they have to do their pioneering stuff against. Whether it's lighthearted like in Little House on the Prairie, where it was just occasional criminals or corporations or diseases, or like this show where it's constant dangers from uh, humans of all sorts, whether they're, whether they're Americans or whether they're American Indians. And plus the environment itself. So uh, I think I, I can see them doing that with a one-year time skip. But I think I don't think it would. I think the audience might get a little fatigue over that, having watched the first, the first season and said, "Okay, we got through this. It was tough. We got through it, and as we got to the end, we got to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Now let's have a little bit of happiness. Not too much because it's still pioneering, but so, but I could see them doing like maybe they sell this valley, which is protected by the Indian tribe from the, in the first season." And then maybe, because they got something good going, uh, some humans who want that go into the area and begin challenging them. And, and that's when the Dutton family established their supremacy. We can, I can see that right away. I just don't think it would work. What I'd really like to see is maybe a three or four year time skip. I know it's, let's make it around. Five year time skip, right? So the little boy who's about five is now 10. Um, uh, Dutton Sr. has become the leader of the community because of his strong character. And will just do what it takes to survive. He's also grown attached to the whole community. He sees it as his as his his thing to protect. You know, he uh, and in interesting contrast to 1883 and to, to Yellowstone, he sees himself as having a working relationship with the tribe that gave him the land. And you, I want I would like to see positive between him and, and the uh, American Indians, showing uh, establishing a long relationship that has challenged. Seems to be challenged a new show by the new chief. So that, that's something I would like to see. And a time skip could help that because this would show they settled there, the small civil group of survivors, they established success, and then other survivors came there, other pioneers, and the community is growing slowly with the, the Dutton family as the, the main family and uh, Jack Dutton as you know the sort of local governor in the, in the territory and the region and whatnot. That, that's one thing I'd like to see. Obviously, I'd like to see some of the family relationships continue when Thomas and Naomi maybe have some children to add to the family because she has his two steps children with Naomi from her previous husband. Uh, what else? Uh, I'd like to see Joseph uh, maybe have a new wife and, you know, come and be good and settling and becoming a, getting his carpentry business back going. Maybe he helps him build all the homes and stuff to earn it and, and so forth. So those are basically... The characters I have to mention them that you know the Dutton family survives because of Yellowstone. Um, I spoil the Thomas survives because uh, I don't know. I think he's going to be the ancestor of a character we see in Yellowstone. But I'm not 100 percent sure. And Joseph, you know, yeah, he's a, he was a he was a secondary character, but he was a cool character. And yes, I'm spoiling it, but he did survive. So and his wife died. So what else do we want to see out of season two? Um, I would like to see some conflict with other groups of settlers in the area who maybe compete for resources and show that that even even the settlers in the old West are competing with each other. That's something for sure. I would like to see the establishment of law and order slowly. You know, Dutton, obviously, we know is a more criminally oriented person in the future. So I, like, the, for example, the Italian mafia form from protective gangs from the neighborhoods, basically, which is how many organized crime uh, syndicates form. First, the gangs want to protect you from other gangs and from corrupt law enforcement. Then they become a mob of some sort, organized crime. Two days later, then you're punished in your own community. And that, that's just a cycle we see in every culture around the world where organized crime arises from protected gangs, right? So we can see, on one hand, Dutton 
begins backing the the, the law enforcement, uh, say a marshal, for example, and uh, who establishes such to establish order. That would be cool to have a new character who is a strong mar who is a marshal, who could who could uh, basically be the law and order guy. This is this I would like. If you remember the character Clint Eastwood played in Hang 'Em High, that's the type of character I'd like to see in this role. A guy who is willing to go dirty, like like Dutton, the Duttons are, but wants to try to do it the right way. What which will contrast with the Dutton family who want to go clean, but will do it their way to, no matter what. So, now who could play this character? Actors, you need a, uh, you would need a middle-aged actor, someone, uh, someone who has, so this person should have some previous background in act. you should recognize this person. I'm not 100% sure who I pick, but Maybe, well, he's on a TV show now, or you can't do it, but uh, the guy who plays Sta Elliot Stable on, on Law & Order, he would have been a great role for this, uh, whose name escapes me right now, but I love his character. He also played on the HBO show about the prisons and so forth. Uh, having him come in, oh, yeah, let's look his name up. Why are we, why are we even being stupid? Let's, uh, let us look up the man's name. Uh, so, Christopher Maloney. So, uh, uh, he's on another show, but an actor like Christopher Maloney has an established TV background. You know, as a, maybe in a law office, but another guy who could possibly do it. Is Dennis Franz still alive? <laughs> I know I shouldn't have that question. Franz, how old is Dennis Franz? Let's see how old Dennis Franz is. 1944. So he is uh, 20, so uh, so he's about 70. You know, he can come in as a, as, a, as a crotchety old judge. That would be interesting. Or uh, yeah, that would be interesting, have him as a crotchety old judge. Work with, remember the judge role in um, Hang Him High? That, that would be pretty cool. But you need, I want to see characters uh, for the marshal and maybe another character, those, those sort of, uh, who establish sort of weight. To their like, like Sam Elliott had, he had a weight to his character. We've seen him in many TV shows and movies playing this type of character. Uh, let's see, uh, let's do a little speculation. I don't want to waste this video, but random speculation, see if I'm prepared. Uh, let's look at um, middle aged TV actors. The 75 best actors, uh, 30 to 50. Let's start there. So again, let's see if this one. Well, obviously, Johnny Depp's not going to do it. And Russell Crowe could do it, but he is a movie guy. But you might, but you never know what these shows. I mean, you, they get people who play anything that's surprising. Like uh, I, I, I was another prop to go over uh, another day, but it, it, like the, 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 the movie actor, there's so much money in TV and so many good products that a lot of movie actors will do the TV show. You know, uh, so who? Uh, I'm just scrolling through where. Woody Harrelson could be interested if he's willing to do a TV show to play that sort of tough, tough man type role he did, you know, in play the character like he did in Zombie. Uh, my brain just died. Sorry about that, guys. Also, in uh, in what I consider the end of all zombie films, so to speak, the the. Well, let's not go crazy. The point is, he's played a character like that before. Uh, who else? Who, I'm looking for someone who could show up on TV. But you guys got what I'm saying. A guy who has an established background and could um, easily, easily have that weight of authority. So that, that's one character I'd like the marshal. Now, who else would I like to see? I'd like to see introduction of a governmental official, maybe along the lines of... Of a the first U.S. senator uh, for for the for the region. Now we have to see. Uh, my brain's not letting me know. When did Montana become a state? Let's take a look. See there. I, I it's fairly close to this time period. When did Montana become a state? Uh, so Montana became a state. In eighteen eighty nine, 
That's what the, we got the plot right now, man. This is what I like to see. To have this be about Montana being admitted to the Union. We get to that period where maybe a uh, some large political entity is driving the drive forward point getting Montana admitted to the Union in 1889. We do the five-year time skip. It's 1888. We're leading into that. And we can have a nice, we can have that as a prominent character, maybe a businessman or a politician. Uh, again, an older person who can do some acting. So that, that's another thing I like to do. The, the, the Montana statehood, I like that to be an issue in season two. What else would like to be an issue in season two? I gave you the big issues, establishing law and order, the statehood. What about the small issues? Well, maybe having the Duttons have a couple more kids so we can see some more younger play, you know, maybe a, a couple younger brothers and sisters for a young John Dutton Jr. senior there. Um, you know, and obviously you have the social issues. The, uh, the older son's a little too young in this uh, Unless you do a massive time skip, you're too young to have his own family. So, uh, if we get the environment of seeing the first generation of people in the town as as kids growing up and forming maybe some of the early families we see in uh, in Yellowstone, uh, maybe have an interesting plot could be you know the community gets affected by a disease, not smallpox. We've had like every episode we've ever mentioned. Uh, you know, maybe the flu, which was very deadly back then, and we have a couple couple. People will die, but they survive it. Uh, so, you know, maybe have another tornado episode. That, that was a great episode. How, how, how to survive that on the plains. So those are my hopes for what, what, what I want to see in season two. Not, nothing gigantic like the town gets blown up and has to be rebuilt. You know, nothing too dark where more people just die just to make it grim dark. But that's what I want. I hope you... Uh, what do you guys want? If you see this video, give me some comments down below. Uh, maybe send me any, uh, you could all shoot me up, hit me up on Twitter, uh, or, or Parler, or Getter, or Gab with a DM if you want to have, have some direct questions. I mean, I know this, I'm still a new guy on YouTube. If I get some questions, I will do a follow up and answer them. So, I'm Matt from Unbearable73. I hope you have a nice day. Hit the like button below if you like my, my video here, uh, my presentation. Well, dislike it if you dislike it. Thank you for, for joining me. Subscribe if you're interested. Have a nice day.